G'day folks, welcome to part 3. In this section of the tutorial, we're talking about a vehicle that doesn't start. All right. Part 1 and 2 was just a service. Uh, your vehicle was running fine and you just wanted to reset the air gaps if you had to on the uh, stator and we checked the module and greased it. All right. Now that we've got a situation where the vehicle doesn't start. All right, so on my website, I've got this diagnostic chart um, that you can use to run through the program of uh, how you do it. Now as a motor mechanic, I obviously am not going to follow this entirely. I've got shortcuts and ways of doing things, and most mechanics have. But for an absolute starter, beginner, this is what you want to follow. So it's step by step going through so you, you can't get lost and you can't make a mistake. Yeah, That's what I'm hoping for anyway when I created this. So uh, we're going to be using this. Now, I'm going to ask the question, how did you check the spark? All right. You could have taken your lead off and then put it off the spark plug and got someone to crank the engine over to see if you were jumping a spark. Or if you're by yourself, you probably need a couple of little gizzos like this. You uh, take the lead off any, any of your plugs and you shove that up in, into there and then put that back onto your spark plug and then you'll see a pulse on here uh, if you've got a spark. Or you can get one of these spark plug gizzos and create the earth and it just cl clips on and then put your lead onto there and see if you're jumping a spark, okay? Very helpful, those two little devices if you've got them. Uh, now, let's say we've got no spark, okay? Let's follow the flow chart. All right, if you've got no spark, is there spark at the coil tower? So that would be the same thing. I would not use your coil lead, just in case it's buggered. You could test it and uh, ensure that it's got the correct ohms resistance. And I've got a little um, information on my website, once again, to tell you what your resistances are for the three common types of HT leads. And uh, you can just see if you can match it up to, uh, to one of those. Um, so... We've once again, we've used this little thing to make sure, see if we've got spark, okay? So we've got no spark at the coil either. All right. So it says no. All right. If there is a uh, spark at the coil, well, obviously you've got a problem with your rotor, your cap, yeah? Or your HT leads going to your spark plugs. Uh, so check all that out. Get Make sure it's all okay. The most common thing with a rotor is uh, cracking down the side of the rotor. Uh, and the spark uh, hits the terminal on your rotor and then just earths straight out onto your shaft. And boom, boom. Yeah, that could cause you a few problems. Being electronic ignition too, that could damage your module. And it could damage your coil as well. Alright, so let's get finding the fault down here. So now what we want to do is we want to... Check that we've got voltage at the coil plus terminal. Yeah, so voltmeter very important. All right, earth your voltmeter. Put the other probe on the plus side of your coil, and turn the ignition on. You should have 12 volts or battery voltage close to it. Okay, so if we've got that and it says yes, not a problem. If it's no, you're going to have to check the wiring uh, going to your coil. Okay. Pretty easy. So now the test light pulse on the negative side coil. All right, so let's see if it's pulsing. So you put the probe now on the negative side. And this is where a lead light comes in real handy. You'll put that on the negative side of the coil and that light will pulse. All right, so uh, I've got a little short snippet there. That's gonna, whoop, this way, that's gonna come up and it'll show you what that looks like when the engine's cranking. That's on another vehicle, Mitsubishi, that's got the electronic ignition, and you'll see the pulse. All right, so if we don't have a pulse, what's the problem? Okay, better check your distributor's turning, yeah? <laughs> Take, you've got your cap off, presumably. Now remember, <laughs> if this is in the car, remember that clip uh, falling in? Uh-oh you will just break your trigger wheel, <laughs> the locating pin, and it'll go all out of phase, and then you'll be in for a, a bit of strife there. So uh, don't do that. 
shove something in there positive that's going to keep these clips away and dropping in like it is now. All right. Uh, where do we get up to? Yeah, if the distributor's not turning, obviously you've broken your drive gear on your distributor or you've broken a camshaft gear or something like that. <laughs> so you want to check those out. Uh, that's a bit bigger job than what you thought. All right, so we've gone, yes, is the distributor turning? We remove the module cover. Okay, we've done that. Um, and uh, we're going to be checking now. Here we go. We're going to be checking for voltage at the terminal down here at the module itself. We've checked it at the coil. We've got it. Now we're going to check it down here. What if we haven't got it? Well, then you replace the low tension lead, yeah? Let's check for pulse of terminal 16 of the ignition module. Has it got a pulse? If it has, replace it your lead once again because that pulse isn't getting up to the coil so it's got to travel through these wires so you'll throw away your low tension lead all right so we haven't got a pulse down there cool what are we going to check now well if we follow my flow chart it should be uh, does it pulse here yeah, yeah pickup coil test the pickup coil yeah that's an easy one so we'll remove all these wires we're going to take this low tension lead back off Take these two wires aside and we'll put a voltmeter on, yeah? Okay. Now this is a pulse generator, as I've said before. So it's going, going to output a voltage. Make sure that nothing is touching metal. Alright. And in your case, if it's still in the car, you'll be uh, cranking the motor over. Once again, watch those clips. Uh, but for me... In here you can see I'm pulsing on the voltmeter all right so as far as I'm concerned that's working fine now you can do a resistance check on this there is a resistance value for that and let's have a look at it we'll flick over to ohms should be somewhere around 1.1 1 .1. okay yeah 1.12 so beautiful the resistance is fine now don't touch these two when you're spinning anything because because they produce a voltage it can be high and it's an alternating voltage all right so uh, if you spin it really fast yeah you'll get the everything happening on the voltmeter and uh, you may get a, sh a little bit of a kick if you put your fingers in there now I have found another test that we could use an LED test light to check this and I am doubting very much it would come up on camera, but let's give it a go. Let's take this back off. We have now proved that uh, the stator and pickup coil all work fine. So, what do we got? It's got to be the module, yeah? Alright, let's put that on there. Let's get that on there, and I do believe I'm going to have to probably wind this over fairly fast to get any sort of a voltage happening on this lead light. Let's see if we can get it to, to do anything. Don't know if we can see it. Oh, look! Bang! Oh, boy, you can get caught out. Oh, yes, look. See the lead light pulsing? Can you see that on the camera? Beautiful. So, uh, that's one way you could check it too. Okay, make sure it's pulsing. If you haven't, well, look, honestly, you need a voltmeter, okay, because we're doing voltage checks all over the place here, so a lead light's not going to cut it for you, but for that test, uh, that uh, test light works beautifully, you can actually get a pulse, and that's what we're after. So, we've gone down to module, okay, we've tested the pickup coil, is the pickup coil pulsing? No, replace it, if you can get them, uh, yes. Just goes straight to replace the module. All right, that's the only thing it can be, or a bad earth, and that ends up coming in here. Check the earthing if you still haven't got a spark. All right, so that's very handy to have for your novices, and I think I've pretty well covered how to test um, the pickup coil. Now look, at this point, what's the point of checking the module? Yeah, we proved that it's got to be the module. But 
For completeness, I will uh, pull out some resistance checks of this thing and we'll see if it's actually uh, got some resistances of the correct value. Okay, so we've got the uh, ohm meter all installed. So let's have a look what we got. We should have OL, no resistance. Swap them around. Red right on there, we've got 9.2 mega ohms. Okay, if we go black and red to here, we should have what? 10 kilo ohms. Let's swap them over. I would suspect that would be the same. Yep, 10 kilo ohms. And then we've got black onto here, onto earth. Oops, I better get my fingers out of the way, yeah. We got that. We got 9.2. And then we're going to swap that over to there. And we've got 0.8. And then we're going to go red lead now here. And black lead there. And we've got overload and then we go there and we've got some resistance all right and that's all you can do guys um if your values are close to that uh no reason why that module shouldn't work we know this one does actually work because i've spun it up and got a spark out of it so uh, that's all good now and uh on my website, there are other PDF files there. I've got resistances of the uh, electronic coils. Um, I've got other information there as well that will be all useful to your diagnostics. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that page. That's uh, Just go to my website, which I'll advertise at the end of this video, and uh, have a look there because not everything's on YouTube. So uh, I think you'll find my website fairly interesting and informative for the information that's there. And I think that's about all you can do. We've solved the problem, yeah, we've got there. Process of elimination using that uh, flowchart. And uh, hopefully you've got your car going again. Catch you in another video. I hope you got something out of this video. You know, I have much more information on all sorts of topics that are not on my YouTube channel. You're welcome to visit my site at the address shown on screen and have a look around. Thank you.